Welcome. I'm looking at the arboricity of surfaces, two-dimensional surfaces, like spheres or tori or Klein bottles, projective planes or higher genus surfaces. And there is a nice pattern. So first of all, for spheres, we have seen that there's a three tree theorem, which tells that exactly three forests are needed to cover the whole sphere. For other surfaces, two-dimensional surfaces, it turns out the arboricity is always four. It's a little bit of a surprise. I didn't expect that. I thought it's impossible that it's also three. There is actually just a precise threshold when we look at the projective plane. The projective plane, the discrete projective plane, has exactly the uh, kind of Nash Williams ratio is three. So there's kind of this is the this is the boundary, but I think this is a nice result. So four forests fit. Now let me explain that in order to prove this, one has to have a lower bound and upper bound. For the lower bound, you can just actually look at this Nash-Williams ratio. If that Nash-Williams ratio for the graph itself is bigger than or equal to two, then you already have at least three. We looked at that a couple of weeks ago already in the case of spheres. And if it is uh, bigger or equal to three, then we have already arboricity at least four. So that's the Nash-Williams theorem. And uh, we have also seen already that the uh, area determines everything. That is something I've used in linear algebra. The two equations, right? Uh, the Insomerville equations, and then there is the equation for the Euler characteristic and th these two equations are linear equations and uh, so only one variable is needed to determine everything and the variable we choose is the faces, number of faces which is the area. It's a quite an interesting theme. I was thinking this summer a little bit about the systolic story while uh, discussing some math with, with Misha Katz, who is an expert in systolic geometry. It's also interesting in the discrete the systolic stories and the question is how small can you make the area of a surface? And uh, in the case of the torus, as the Lerner inequality, which, which is a kind of a very beautiful story in the continuum, but in the discrete it's pretty much the same. But that's not written down, so I have to say. It's the, the general question is then how small can you make a surface of genus G, depending on orientability, so depending on the Betty numbers, how small can you make this surface? And of course, there is a minimum for every Betty choice of Betty numbers, there is a minimum because it's a finite story, and the question is what is the minimum? I don't know the answer in. Uh, general, but for the sphere, we have already kind of a story. The octahedron is the minimum in the projective plane. We call this the Jenny graph. We have a, also a minimum, which is pretty clear. But uh, in the other case, in the torus case, I think it's 32. We don't need all this really for the for that for that for that theory. We don't need optimal bounds. We need just bounds. So in order to, to have the lower bound. We just uh, look here at this equation and uh, we look what happens when x is equal to 2, which is the other characteristic is equal to 2, then what happens is for f small, small, or we need smaller than 4, we would need less than 4 faces, and in the case x equal to 1, that's kind of an interesting case, then this ratio is actually just exactly three. For every projective plane, we have exactly the ratio three, which means the arboricity is already four. And then uh, at least four, and then for the, uh, when x is e smaller than zero or, or zero, then it's even worse. Then uh, this, is, uh, this, is not, this, is not, this is not possible. It's harder to have the upper bound, and we have fought with the upper bound already in the in the sphere case, first of all, in order to look at, when we look at the arboricity, we are not really interested in that uh, ratio by itself, which can become also in principle larger for subgraphs. So we can restrict ourselves to graphs which don't have leaves. 
So you have a graph with a leaf, then the arborescent is the same, then then we take the leaf away. So we take all these leaves away. What we end up is, is with a graph without leaves. And then uh, the only interesting case is if, if then this graph is a uh, great for, uh, for the surface where you have faces uh, which, which are polygons. And in this case, you can just fill out the polygon. You add more edges, and if you add more edges, then this ratio here can only become bigger. So indicating that this ratio for the whole two sphere is uh, upper bound already. <clears throat> so we have just to look at this upper bound of this uh, of E over V minus one for the entire surface and not for a subgraph. We have to see what does it actually mean that E over V minus one is smaller than four and this produces us bounds on the number of faces. So the faces cannot be there cannot be too many faces. So in the case x is equal to one, this is just kind of indicating again that we have seen for the projective plane that there is actually this is always the case. Or x equal to zero is already interesting. X equal to zero means that we need less than eight faces. But you cannot realize a two-dimensional torus with less than eight faces. The smallest one is uh, has 32 triangles. But uh, this is this Lerner uh, story. We can actually get a little bit less at just uh, the curvature with the Gauss bonus. So we need at least just we have two loops which go around and so this gives us a bound on the number of vertices, minimal number of vertices, and then we have a minimal number of vertices, we can from that get the minimal number of faces and the minimal number of faces has them to be at least 12, which is bigger than 8. So this is without this Lerner uh, bound, we can also just get it from an elementary point of view. And uh, in the case of when we have negative curvature, we use the gauss bonnet theorem. So if you have negative curvature, we can we know how many points have negative curvature. And curvature is 1 minus dx over 6. So, so that's related to the sphere case, which so kind of has been known since centuries, right? That you have, a, if you have, a, if you have a, a two-dimensional sphere, discrete two-dimensional sphere, there are at least 12 points where the curvature is positive. You cannot have less. You can either have curvature one third or curvature one six. So usually, what you have is curvature one six, which is vertex cardinality five, gives you curvature one six. And so there have to be at least 12 of those. In this case, what you have is you have curvature one third. And so we have six vertices of curvature one third, which gives you Euler characteristic two. So in this case, the, this is a flat case. This is the flat case where the curvature is zero at every point. Also for the Klein bottle. This is the Klein bottle. This is the, this is the torus. So that's uh, something new and uh, I hope I can write this down. Okay, that's it for today. <laughs>